Welcome, everyone. It's Chris Patry. Thanks for coming by again and working along with me here on our tutorials. We have a beautiful and fun flower tutorial now. We're going to do two gorgeous compositions here. The first one here you can see on my phone will work from our phone. We'll have that in the uh, screen here so you can work along and draw and paint from this uh, exact photo here. And you can also do a screen capture here if you wanted to in the beginning of the um, a video for um, if you want to use that for your reference photo. So maybe I'll take these paintings and individually put them on screen for, for a few seconds. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a fun time. So let's get everything all prepped, our paints, our brushes, our paper. Let's uh, get started in just a second. And I'll just put these quick on screen. So I'm going to move my phone here quick. And maybe we'll... I'll zoom in just a little bit here. Okay. All right, that's the first painting. And then the second one here is here. Okay, so we just finished uh, looking at the finished painting, paintings. Uh, we did two flower paintings here. So th this is the fun thing about doing beginners style watercolor painting on my channel. I, I always try to promote, um, if you're just starting out, try to do a little more uh, work, more paintings, uh, a little faster pace and, um, you know, looser kind of a feel because it, it's to your advantage to kind of keep focusing on getting to the next painting and the next bit of compositions that you're going to do, practice sessions, swatches, whatever it is you're doing. If you can kind of keep a good pace and keep going forward and not get too hung up on one painting or one composition that you're doing, if it goes wrong, especially in the beginning, things will, you know, will always go wrong when you're first starting out in watercolors and you're a beginner. Um, but you will have some really good, um, results too, as you start out. So in the beginning in watercolor, basically I, I like to kind of you know, I like, I liken it to maybe like practicing like a musical instrument or maybe athletics, uh, sports, um, maybe a cooking, doing like cooking, baking, things like that. When you first start out and you're, if you can remember when you first started out doing like, you know, any of those things or something similar to that in the beginning, it's a little bit of a learning curve. You have to kind of get the feel for things, you know, uh, it takes a while to get the hang of, um, the different, you know, techniques you're going to use, the methods. But once you start to uh, get the hang of things, it, it becomes a lot easier. So that's why I say, you know, just keep working on the next project, the next composition, the next painting, and don't worry so much about just one or two that we're doing. Just keep working on to the next project. And even if it's something you maybe don't like to paint, maybe you say to yourself, oh, I love flowers, but I don't like landscapes too much or... Um, architecture or boats or, you know, water, seascapes, things like that, or portraits or figure work, just try to do it all. Even if you don't like it, just practice it a little bit. And if you don't like it, that's all the more you can just use it as like a little bit of, um, you know, giving yourself a break and saying, I'm not going to really focus too hard on this because this is not my favorite subject matter, but I will try it anyway. You know, Chris mentioned to just give it a shot, try different, you know, methods, techniques, different subject matter. Because if you keep trying all different you know, subject matter, it'll help you to learn different techniques, different ways of approaching watercolor. And it all goes back to once you kind of settle in and find a few subject subjects that you really like to paint the most, all of those other practices and all of the other subject matter that you're going to do, it'll make your subject matter that you like to paint most better because you'll have practice a lot of different styles and, and subject matter and so forth. So just a little key uh, bit of information there. Hope it helps out. Uh, I'm sure you're doing really well as we're going here on our videos, extreme beginner videos. Um, many of you have been, you know, here now with me for a while, probably almost close to a year, half a year or so, maybe a year, some of you, uh, doing the extreme beginner series. And, um, I'm sure you're making great progress. So, uh, keep up the great work and we're going to keep moving along here. 
So I'm just going to take a, a simple office pencil and I'm going to try to just capture these quick few flowers here. This is a vase of flowers and I'm just going to kind of key in on a few flowers at the top of the vase. And if I move this down just a touch like that, that's the top there. And then what I'd like to do is I'd, I have some of these around stencils in, in my studio. Once in a while, these might be good to have. If you might, you might have them already. You might um, have purchased one or two or something when you're at the art store. But this is really cool. It's got curves on it. And that's really cool. You have curves. So what we can do is we can kind of start off the, the painting in a really good solid um, manner. Because in the beginning, it's going to be hard to just go in and do a really beautiful flowing curving line like this here when you're first starting out drawing and painting in watercolor. So if you can use a couple of these aids like stencils, then you might be able to say, all right, let me start out this really well. Let me try to find this angle here as much as I can with my stencil. And then maybe there's the other side of the stencil like this. Maybe this is closer to what we're looking at. That might be. And then the reason I do this is I can get a really nice curved um, stem on this flower here. Right to start with, I just go like this, like that. And therefore, we have started out with a beautiful curved, curved line, like this. And then we can go in and we'll work on the fl flower shape up here. But let's get this other curved line too while we have our stencil and let's do another one. So let's do about maybe three. Let's do another one here. This one here is quite a bit lower than this line here. I'm looking here, so it's about down somewhere around here. We can kind of give it a little bit of a guesstimate about there. Just a little, there we go. And there we have another nice flowing curved line. We're getting that in with our stencil so we don't stress out too much. We're trying to get these curved lines in the beginning. It's tough to do some of these kind of lines curved lines are kind of tough in the beginning. Kind of best to do them fast. And I always say keep your hand always resting on the paper. You can almost use your your hand resting on the paper as a pivot point and then you just lock your hand down onto the paper and then you can just hold your pencil real tight and swing a line and you can get this line pretty accurate like this. But that's something you probably gonna have to practice a little bit first to get the hang of. So before, you know, while you get the hang of doing some of these practice techniques, uh, we'll use the stencil. Why not? And then over here we'll do this other curved line here, this stem over here. And that comes from over here and like that. All right, so we have three nice curved lines. Now let's work on our flower shape. So we're going to not, we're just going to kind of go and check out our, our photograph here and Okay, that's the first flower. And then we can just kind of carefully trace, trace down this stem, just holding the pencil, you know, that little bit of distance away from the other line that we already have established with our stencil. And then we have, I'm gonna go right through this section here. This, this line kind of comes up like this. And then we start our flower just as we cross that line there. We're starting our next flower there. And then if we have to, we can use the kneaded eraser. Like that. If we go a little bit too far and then we double check and say, oh, wait a minute, where is this flower starting the bottom of this flower? And we notice it's pretty close to where this is here, where this crossing point is there. So that's like our kind of our clue or our, um, yeah, it's kind of like our indication of, let's start saying, asking ourselves the question, where does this bottom of this flower start here? And we can kind of see it is close to this crossing point here where this other long curved stem comes up. So that's when we say, all right, let's start our, the bottom of our flower there. And then we'll just come up and do a nice shape here. 
and I'm not going to get really involved with all the details. I just want to kind of capture the maybe the silhouette of the flower. As you can see here, I'm not going into all the fine details within the flower itself. We'll just kind of use the watercolor paint to make that really look good. And then I'm just going to try to get the other bits of, and there we go. And then we have our second flower shape, the flower petals. And again, we're going to paint these so we're not going to draw in all those details you can see there. And then here we have this other interesting flower shape there and we have another one here. So let's let's do this one and this is more fine so I can kind of have fun. There's just a lot of little small shapes in there. Get the, uh, I always say, try to get the overall shape of what that looks like. That kind of looks like a, a top of a pineapple or a thimble, maybe something like that. So now I'm thinking of just like a thimble or the top of a pineapple and I'm not so much thinking about what this is. I'm just knowing that it looks, looks like the shape of a thimble or maybe the top of a pineapple or maybe, you know, somebody with really bushy hair, top of a head, you know, kind of a shape or something like that. And then, and then underneath that, there's a little more, some leaf forms, but that's good enough. We don't want to, we don't want to do too much detail. Just get in some little shapes like that just so it reminds you to paint that way. You want to paint some small little splashes or something there to kind of give that a good realistic look of what we're looking at in the photograph. And then we're going to swing this curve around here. And then here the same thing. I'm looking at pretty much something that looks similar to a, a badminton um, One of those badminton uh, balls. I guess it's a ball with uh, like some plastic on it. That kind of, or it looks like an arrow. Basically, it looks like an arrow to me, even like the front of a like an arrow. So let's do an arrow shape here, and that's all we need to do is think of an arrow shape, and then we're good. And then we'll paint in all those little tiny details later. We just want to get the shape basically. Okay, and then we have some finer details over here. Let's get this larger shape over here. Maybe we will, um, let's get in our, our other red flower shape here. In the corner here, I made it a little bit smaller than this. And then this is a little more challenging here. I'm gonna try to go I guess it's a little bit, I got my, my palette over here, so it's a little difficult to, but this is no problem. Let's do this. We're going to paint this in too, so you don't have to worry. Your pencil lines are just basically your start to your composition, your painting. So you're just kind of getting ideas down, and then you're going to paint most of the information later. And then we're just going to do this larger flower shape here, and that looks pretty good. Look at that. Good, good, good. Nice. All right, so we're getting there. Let's get a few more a little bit of uh, shapes in here. And now here's maybe where you can do some more free-flowing lines. They're a little bit easier because they're kind of smaller. So if you have smaller curved lines, they're a little bit easier when they're smaller on your, pa your paper. These larger flowing lines and curves are harder, but if you're doing smaller ones, you can kind of just take your pencil and you know these are kind of a little easier to do and then I'm just going to uh, add a few small flower shapes here and I'm gonna go off the beaten path I'm not gonna really follow this now because I don't think these shapes here look so good to me so I'd rather just do a few of my own little bud shapes of some flowers here like so and maybe a little leaf form there, like that. Another leaf form here. Another leaf form there. Another leaf form here. All right, so I just did a few of my own improvisational um, lines and shapes. Please do some improvisation when you're working. It's always good as a watercolor artist to practice doing improv, you know, improvising, doing something a little different, doing your own little creations here and there as you're working, because sometimes it really is going to help. If you get to a spot where you're painting or drawing and it's something that really is 
looks like way too complicated, you're going to want to simplify it and maybe kind of do a little of your own, um, you know, uh, creative um, license to change things around a little bit and make it a little bit easier for yourself. Or you might think that something's going to look a little better if you minimize it or make it look a little more simple than maybe trying to do exactly what you're seeing. So that's always good to remember. You always have the freedom when you're creating your art to change things around. So always remember that. It's a good thing to remember. I use that philosophy all the time. So now we have our drawing complete. Maybe there's another, there's another line going that way, another bit of a leaf form there. And I think that looks good. All right, next thing we could do before we take a break is we can just take a look and see if our, how our pre-cut mats look with this. So let's see if we can find something. Okay, here's a pre-cut mat. All right, so this pre-cut mat's too big for this, this uh, composition we're doing. You can kind of see how it's too large. So we need the next step down from this one. This one is 11 by 14 frame or a seven and a half by nine and a half window. So that's too large. Okay, I don't see my other pre-cut mats. Oh, here it is. This is an eight by 10 frame size, eight by 10 frame size and four and a half by six and a half window. That looks like that's gonna work. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's a little bit too tight with the, uh, we need a little larger than this. So we need the in-between size, which I don't have, I don't think. I'm gonna have to pick up a few more of these at the art store, but we'll work that out later. Let's get to painting next. Let's just take a quick break. We did a lot of work drawing. Let's always remember, if you focus a lot of your energy and you work really hard and intensely on a drawing like this, best thing to do is take five, 10, or even 15 minutes to take a break. And then you come back and you'll feel a little more refreshed, a little more relaxed. And then when you start, mixing your colors and painting, you're going to feel much better about that. You'll, you'll be more like, it'll go smoother, the process, because you're not kind of trying to, you know, really focus hard on concentrating and not kind of drifting off a little bit. And so less uh, problems if you take some breaks in between. So maybe 15 minutes, we do the drawing, we take a break, then we come back after 10, 15 minutes, or even the next day, whenever you want to break up your breaks but in between. And then you'll just work like that. And you trust me, it's going to help your uh, paintings come along really nicely if you're taking breaks and not trying to push the uh, limits of your um, concentration level and uh, so forth. So let's come right back in a second and we'll start painting. Okay, so we're back. We're going to start painting. And I have uh, my two brushes that uh, I'm usually, you know, usually we'll, we're all together using these brushes constantly. It's the the uh, Prang Oval 16 uh, brush that we have here and then a small um, flat brush. So these are the two we'll use. And uh, I think that's pretty much all the brushes we're gonna need. I spilled a little bit of water, no big deal. That, that happens. Um, when we're painting watercolor, sometimes you'll have, a, you know, something tip over, whatever, no big deal. Um, it might actually make a painting look a little better, maybe, in some cases. So, um, we'll have these two brushes. I think we'll use these brushes here, and uh, we'll just get started. And we'll start mixing some colors. Uh, green, red, yellow. There's some purple and blue. So those are kind of the colors we're going to use. Let's mix up maybe, let's start, um, I'll start up here on the left side of the painting and work my way over this way. Since I'm right-handed, I'd rather start on the left side of my painting and then work my way around this way. So we'll start off with the reds here for this uh, flower shape. And uh, I'll just put some red here. And then while I'm doing that, I'll take a little purple so I'll have a little bit of a 
purple mixture just on the side over here. So that's going to be kind of like a a good a good kind of combination to get a little variation instead of just going with one color. Let's try to mix some some additional colors in to get a nice variation in our red here. And then maybe this too, maybe a little bit of this red over here. It's kind of like a cadmium red. And then Incidentally, you can have a um, second water container. So maybe when you're mixing your paints out onto your palette, this is a really great tip. I hope you'll follow this tip. It might work out great for you. Sometimes does it make sense when you're mixing your colors on your palette and you're pre-mixing your colors so that you have everything pre-mixed in your palette, you're getting a lot of paint all over your brush hairs and you'll make your water really murky and muddy looking. So what you can do is have a, have a container maybe by your palette that you'll use for just when you're mixing your paints onto your palette. And this way you really don't care too much if you get that water all muddy and murky and full of all kinds of different colors and sediments because you're just doing it to mix the colors out. And that's not a big deal because you're never going to see that little bit of um, muddiness in your paints when you're mixing out colors. So you can kind of see how I'm mixing out my colors here. Maybe I'm better off doing that. So I have my... So I'll use this water container. I'll put my really, really light green here. Then I'll go with my darker green in the middle here, like that. And then I'll go with my cool green over here, which has really got a lot of blue in it. See how that's kind of a very, kind of a cool green? here, then like a medium green up here, which is kind of a little warmer. And then over here we have a really light green, which is kind of some lemon in there and some light green like that, some lemony yellow color there. So we have a nice mixture of three greens here. We have a nice mixture of like three reds, which are these two here and a little bit of purple. And um, maybe we'll mix some um, Maybe we'll mix a little bit of, um, maybe some blue and, maybe some blue and red to give us kind of like a grayish color. Maybe we can get a light purpley red, maybe a little orange in there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have a nice mixture of red and green and a little bit of yellow. And we need some more yellow up here for this flower, so we'll make a little more yellow up there, like that. Okay, we have our colors pretty much mixed up. Uh, we need a purple. Maybe we'll do that purple when, we, when we're down over here on these two. But let's get these. These are the first really good starts. This is a good start to getting our colors pretty much a lot of our colors mixed prior to going in and painting. And again, using the method of having a separate maybe water container when you're just doing your mixes for your colors on your palette. Then when you go into paint, you'll have your fresh clean color. And you might even try to incorporate two water containers at the same time to keep your paints looking a little more fresh looking and not as much muddy water. So that can really be a help. And look, make your colors look a little more exciting. And so, like, I'm, I'm just going to start doing this here. Okay, it's lighter over here, and then we get more intense toward the outer edges of the flower. So we can kind of make that note in our minds. We say, all right. And we can even take a little purple, like we have over here, and get a little bit darker there here and there, around the outer edges. If you want to lighten up a section, you can always blot a little bit of paint with uh, a tissue. Like that. And then don't forget, you can let that dry 100%. You can let your flower now dry 100%. 
And then once that dries 100%, you can go back in and do a little more detail work, if you like, with a pointier brush than maybe we have right here right now. But this is looks good. I think that's looks good. I'll just do a quick splash there. Then we'll go in and we'll start working on our stem. I might make a little bit of a brownish color here just to mix in with my stem color. And I'll start doing my stem. And it's easy. I just keep my hand resting on the paper. Get a really good stable base with my hand resting on the paper. And then I just touch the... Touch the... Uh, brush to the paper just a tiny bit and then I'll start picking up some different greens I want to kind of change the colors around maybe I'll take some yellow there mix in some yellow maybe I'll add a little bit of brown here and then down here I might go a little darker like that okay so that looks pretty good okay let's work on our next red flower here let's go in and again I'm just carefully pressing my brush onto the paper, pressing down, lifting up, trying to see there's a little bit of green here in this flower. So let's get a little bit of that green wash in there. A little bit over here too. There's some green wash there. And there's some red over here, some good vibrant red, like that. And then there's some more. And again, you can go off the, you, you, when you're looking at your subject matter, I like to do this. I like to, you know, I'm trying to get it close to what I'm seeing here, but not exact. You know, I want to try to keep it a little more fresh. There's a lot of detail in that photograph that I'm working from, and I really don't think I can get it while painting mm, right now. I'd have to take hours just to get one flower to look exactly like that. So instead of taking one hour or two hours to get one flower completed, I'm going to keep my painting a little looser, if that makes sense, a little freer, so that I'm not just, you know, spending hours on one portion of the painting. And there I just added a little bit of purple to that front section there of that flower, and then I can add extra paint there. So, then I can smooth that out a little bit, so I take some of that a little more green in there. A little bit of green in there too as well. So I'm just taking some of that green mixture and kind of blending it into the flower, sh flower shapes here. And some more green under here. And then we'll get our stem. I'll just go right over the other one. Like that. And then there's a leaf form over here. So I'm just going to start it out like that, and then widen out my brush like that. And if you don't like splashing, you can lift up the splashing, or if it doesn't come out good, the splashing, you know, if you do a couple splashes and it doesn't look great, you can always lift it up. Or you don't have to do them really at all. I like to splash when I'm creating my paintings. You're the artist, you have to decide what you like to, what type of techniques you like to use in your paintings. I'll do this here. This is the other stem there. And then let's do this yellow flower. So let's... I think what I'd like to do is get the majority of the color of the yellow color in here. And it's a mixture of yellows and greens and oranges. And I'll just try to get 
get the main large shape first and then I can go back in and see that there's a little bit of orange in here and there. I'll put a couple little bits of orange and red like that. And maybe I soften a little bit of those lines, maybe a little bit. Like that. And then continue on with my uh, stem here. A little bit challenging to do this over here, but I think I can do this here. So I got a little bit of that there, a little bit of yellow maybe. So I'm going to change up my stem colors, maybe a little brown up here. Make the stem a little darker under here maybe. Like that. A little bit lighter here. Okay, that looks good. I blend that out a little bit there. And then let's see what else we get. Let's do this red shape over here, this flower shape over here. So I'll just start up here like that and get that in. And then I see there's quite a bit. And there's a little bit of purple there. Let's get some of that purple color too. And then let's maybe put a couple of these green leaf forms in here. And I'll try to mix up some green and brown. Make kind of like an olive color. So this way there's a little bit of variation there. And I'll continue with um, some more of these. Maybe uh, we have quite a bit of yellow over here. This is a really powerful yellow in the picture. Let's maybe make another couple bits of yellow down here. And we might even add something in over here. Like a couple of, maybe one more yellow flower over here to kind of balance out the painting. And we're moving right along. We've been working 15 minutes and I can see we've made a lot of progress here on this uh, painting. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, maybe we'll draw in another little small flower over here. We'll improvise that in. We'll finish up these purple flowers over here. And I think that'll be it. And we'll have a, a beautiful, fresh looking flower painting. So I hope you're really having a good time, having fun here along with me on our watercolor journey here. Um, if you would like to keep uh, up to speed and uh, keep aware of my new paintings coming out each week, all you have to do is click the subscribe button below on the right hand side over here below the screen. There's a subscribe button. There's also a little small bell. If you click on that small bell, it's like a gray color bell. If you click on that bell, you'll see it's, it says notifications. And if you just click on all notifications, that means each week when we're working, you'll always see my new videos. Uh, when you open up YouTube the next time, you'll see that I've created some new videos. And it'll, YouTube will just have it on the side of your uh, screen on YouTube. So you'll see that I have some new videos coming out if you want to keep up to speed on what I'm doing. And maybe if it's a painting, you might want to wait till another time. Then you can just kind of skip over it. Or if you're uh, interested in kind of seeing what it's about, you just click on it and you'll go from there. But I'm um, glad you're here joining us and we're having a lot of fun and we'll come right back and we'll finish up this first painting and then we'll get right into our second painting. 
And I also uh, wanted to mention I did save my paper over here underneath with some printer paper. So I put some uh, artist tape on top of the bottom half of my watercolor paper here so that when we're done we can just turn the paper, spin it uh, 180 degrees this way and we'll create our next painting right on the same piece of 11 by um, 14 watercolor paper which is the uh, Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, so let's continue on here. We're just taking a quick break. We're coming back from our break. Uh, we're gonna do these purple flower shapes over here. And we did say we wanted to add in maybe another flower over here. Let's improvise and get a flower shape over here. Let's do another smaller flower shape here. And let's make that maybe a smaller version of this here. Like that. So we just did a miniature version of this. I just basically used this same shape and created that right over here. This way we have some good balance and color in this composition. Let's get right back into it here. So let's uh, start out. Maybe we'll get our yellow flower over here, just like we did before. We go, maybe sometimes you dig right into the yellow paint right out of the palette. You don't always, you know, we don't always have to mix in the palette. We can go right into straight into the palette there. And we wanted a little bit of red or orange in there. stem in here. Like so. Looks good. We're all right, we're actually Let's go in and get some purple here. Now what we can do is we did use some purple here. And we used purple in here, so this is going to look good. It's going to kind of... It's going to match and kind of harmonize with the rest of the painting. And I'll just look at this and kind of get those dots in there. And the same thing here. I'm just going to get some water and I'm going to splash right close to the paper here. So I'm just going to hold my, my brush like an inch or half an inch or an inch above. You can even use another brush if you want. You can use another brush. Take your brush here that you have with your purple paint on it, and you can take another brush and kind of tap right um, right there. Or you can just kind of splash like this, and then when you get a couple splashes on, then you take those splashes and you just move around the paint a little bit, and I think you'll have it. And I'm using my two purples here. There's a uh, darker purple, what I would say more rich, uh, uh, more um, cooler. Actually, this is a warmer purple, I believe. And that's fine. Like that. All right, looking good. Now we could, if we want to, I usually have a needlepoint brush that I use all the time when I'm creating artwork here, because I, I do enjoy painting flower paintings, so this is kind of like something we always want to 
try to have when we're doing our flower paintings because you can get some really nice fine really fine lines and that adds another layer of excitement to your paintings if you can have um, some fine really fine lines with like a needlepoint brush like this and we can do a few more like this here like that so when we do a few lines like this maybe there's another one there that's in plenty and that looks like we have a finished uh, composition right there so let's uh, move on to the next uh, flower composition flower painting this one really turned out really beautifully we have lots of colors we did a little bit of improvising we took and added an extra tulip over here a yellow tulip over here to the left just so it kind of balances the color so you have a little bit of yellow over here or actually a lot of yellow there and then a little bit over here and then of course the reds were already balanced we had two kind of red flowers here and then another some flower shapes over here too that are red so that kind of really balances nicely and then our purple in the center that looks fine I don't think we need to really I think this looks fine with just that little bit of purple in the center and that is good. All right, so let's uh, take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll start on our second flower composition. Okay, let's get started on another flower uh, composition. We're going to do something a little different here. We're going to maybe just uh, downshift a few gears and not get too... Um, um, detailed with this one. We're just going to kind of keep this one real simple. Um, we'll do a purplish red flower over here, some flower shapes, petals, flower petals. We'll get a couple berries over here on the left and we'll get some of these um, stems and some of these twigs and leaf forms too as well. But let's keep this one a little more simple. Let's see how we can um, work on this one. Let's make it... Um, Let's make our large flower shape over here and then our berries over here so we'll kind of keep it kind of centrally located and then I'll just bring my stems up here and then this is the flower the start of the flower petals so I'm just gonna So I'm just going to go around as I see the flower petals. Like that. And then in the center there's some interesting uh, shapes like that and some detail to the flower in the center and it's darker down here and then there's the petal here okay and that is a few more stem shapes here and this might be the actual main stem for this flower here And then we have a few more stems over here, like that. We'll paint in some of the rest of these. I just kind of wanted to get one in here. This will we'll do the berries over here. And these will just, I'm going to try to capture the look of these berries. And I'm improvising. I'm not probably following it exactly. Like that. All right, so we have the basic idea of things here. Let's do this. <clears throat> We've got the 
drawing done. Now we're going to mix up right here in the center our reds and purples. And you can kind of see the difference between these two purples. This one's a little cooler. It's got a little more blue in it. This purple up here and this purple down here is a little warmer. It has a little more uh, red in it. This one here is a little more red, I think. So then we have a nice combination here of colors. Maybe a little bit of brown mixed in there to kind of tone down the colors here. This one's a little bit less vibrant with colors. So you can always add in some orange and brown to kind of tone down the colors a little bit. And we might even want to add a touch of black up here. Just so maybe we can get a little bit of with some green maybe and some brown and orange just to get a good dark like that for some of the branches and things. All right, I think we have enough mixes here that we can start and we'll get our darks here mixed in, maybe a little bit of black there. So I'm gonna go in here and do some, I'll do a little bit of more watery mix there. And if you have a little bit of an issue, or you splash on something. This paint is very forgiving. The Prang Oval 16 paint, you can generally lift up a spot or a, something that spills, or if you lean into your paint and you get some spots on your paper, it's quite easy to just sort of use a wet paper towel and it kind of cleans right up real quick, real nice, like that. Okay, and then I might make this a slightly bit more colorful than we're seeing here in the picture. And so I'm just trying to move around. Try to get the basic shapes of things here. Straight into some red paint there. Some more darks here. Rinse off the brush, maybe. Get a little bit of a lighter tonal value up here, perhaps. You can make a little bit, some more, you know, I'm going a little lighter than I'm seeing in the picture. Just for some variety. And you can always go in and do a couple thumb scratches going upwards here, just to give you that, that feeling of the center of the flower like that. Then we can start going in here and get some larger leaf forms here. Now this is the fun part. We're pretty much making good progress here. And we can do our uh, berries here. Now with these berries, I'm um, going with the photograph. I'm leaving some white dots on each berry, and that's going to, you know, be the light, the light shining on the berries. They're very, very smooth, like glossy, the berries. So you're seeing little bits of light on the berries themselves. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to try to capture that. So I try to leave at least one dot of light on each berry. Or two, one or two on each one. Like that. And 
then we are going to do a few more berries down here. I didn't draw them in, but let's just paint them in here. There's a few more berries here. And again, I leave a couple of spots on the berries. A couple of berries there, one more here. Like that. I'll do a couple splashes like that. Then I think I'll get my needlepoint brush and get the rest of my uh, fine my finer uh, leaf forms and stems with this. So and I'll just do that. Get some darker tones like that. And then sometimes lifting your, holding your brush really high up on the handle like this and staying pretty high up off the paper. Almost you can even hold the brush really like this all the way up to the very top. And then if you just touch the paper lightly, you can kind of really get some nice flowing lines for the branches like this. Take some practice. You could take a couple pieces of um, printer paper and practice these type of lines with your brushes. You can always take your brush and some paint and do like practice uh, exercises on, you know, um, printer paper, some inexpensive paper. It's um, a fun way to practice. I do that a lot. And then I'll get some green stems in here. Just a few. And then there's a few more darker stems up here that go up like this behind this flower and carry up all through this section there that. And I think that's it. That is, I think, really captures the beauty of this. Simply, quickly, we didn't spend a ton of time. We can maybe touch these up a little bit and make these more round shapes. So if you wanted to do that, that can really be So I'll take some really, really dark darks here, the blacks and the purples, and you can just maybe shape these lights that you left in your middle of your flower into circles, because that's kind of what's there. I'm looking at the photograph and I can kind of see they're kind of like circles for the most part. And there we go. All right. So I'm glad you were with us here today to paint these flowers. We've had a lot of fun. And we covered all kinds of interesting techniques, how to mix paints, how to get some more interesting lines on the paper using a needlepoint brush, which is really valuable if you can get one of these. It'll help your flo you know, your fl floral paintings tremendously um, to get a little more detail in there. Um, it would be really hard to try to get those fine lines with this brush here that comes with the set, and it's a great brush. You can do most of your whole painting with this one brush, but when you want to get to these finer lines, you do need a needlepoint brush, really. And uh, I just kind of, I'm looking at this and seeing that we need a few more of these lines here. These stems here that go up for these berries. Let's do that. There we go. And a few more there. Okay, thanks again for watching everybody. We'll see you soon. Happy painting. Enjoy the journey of watercolor. It's fun. We're just making progress each week as we go, week after week, month after month, and year after year. And as long as we're working along together a little bit each week or every other week, whatever you can find time to do, no stress, just fun. And each time you work, you're going to learn something new. You'll get a little more familiar with everything, the brushwork, 
the paints, the mixing of the paints, the colors, the drawing, the pencil drawings, all these different things. You'll just learn each time you do a little bit of work, you'll kind of get more familiar with it and it'll become a little bit easier each time. So uh, again, happy painting everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.